Hi guys, today I'm going to show you guys how to play guitar with one finger. Now, there's a couple of ways to do this, um, and all of them are going to involve some kind of different tuning with your guitar. So although this sounds like a beginner's dream, it's, actually, it's a little fiddly to begin with, and once your guitar is set up, it then becomes a lot easier, and actually allows us to focus on your strumming hand, which is what will definitely make you sound more professional. As a, as a guitarist, especially on acoustic, it's kind of all about the strumming or the picking and a lot of focus is put on the chord hand, but actually we can make that very simple but still sound so professional. Let me show you what I mean. There's different tunings you can put it in, open D, open G, you'll have heard of uh, some of those terms possibly or not, it's totally fine. What we're going to do, your guitar is currently in standard tuning which means that your strings are tuned to E, A, D, G, B, E. If you've ever had to tune your guitar before, that will sound very familiar with you. Um, it's the middle two strings alone that we can change to do it the way that I'm going to show you, which is basically the easiest way to play songs in the key of E. Um, if that means nothing to you, again, don't let that put you off, just follow my instructions and you'll be totally fine. It will be best if you use a guitar tuner to check this, but let's have a go at this now. So I'm going to use my tuner on the top of my guitar, and we're going to take the D string actually up to an E note, which my tuner is there. Now you can check that with 7th fret on the A string and try and get those two sounding like the same note. If they sound close to being the same, then you know that we're onto the right thing. And then we're going to make the third string, the G, up to a G sharp, so just higher by one fret. And if we have a listen at that now, that will be 4th fret on the D string that you want to check that with. They should sound very close at least to being the same note. So now we have E, A, back to E again, G sharp, and then still B and E. So E are the two that we're wanting. E should sound like that, and G sharp. String three should sound like that one. Um, the lesson plan in the description below, if you click the link to the website, there'll be kind of a breakdown of that lesson because I know that can kind of put people off. But now your guitar is set up to be really easy to play in what we call the key of E. So the chords in that key, which is the only thing that really matters if you're a beginner guitarist, just which chords are grouped together, that's all a key is, is E, A, B, and C sharp minor. Now it's certainly that C sharp minor that's going to make a few faces go, oh my god, I'm never going to be able to play a C sharp minor. But it's actually really easy. If we just demo first of all, there's my E chord, one finger, I've got the other ones miles off the guitar just to illustrate. We have an A chord by putting your first finger here. Again, I'll talk you through this in a second. B, let's put it in the same place, but only strum from string five. And then finally the C-sharp minor. So you can see there that this was very physically easy for me to do. And um, as I say, there's, I think in the guitar world for beginners, there's far too much of an emphasis put on the actual chords and fingering and, and this hand. And it's actually the strumming and getting the coordination between your two hands that's actually going to make it sound like you're really playing something that, that sounds really great. So, as I say, this is just something to shake things up a bit, really. Um, let me talk you through how to play each one of those chords and then show you what you can do with them. So our E chord is your first finger at second fret of the fifth string. And that will sound the same as your standard E major when you're in a standard tuning. Your A major chord in this tuning would be first finger at the first fret of the third string. 
And just strumming through those two chords, which by the way, you can then go and play any of the 10 songs that are at the start of my beginner's course and more, just by playing these two chords in this fashion. Um, for example, Buffalo Springfield for what it's worth, that will become this. Much easier. And a lot, of, a lot of you may be thinking, Andy, why didn't we start here from, from lesson one? What's, what, what, why did we learn all the other stuff? It, sim by tuning your guitar in this way, first of all, tuning your guitar in this way is a little bit tricky. Some of you may have found that tricky already. And, and secondly, it does limit the amount of things that you can play. So we can't play any song like this. This is just a tool that we can use to get you sounding kind of a, a lot better, a lot more professional. And if you've ever um, heard any fingerstyle folk guitarists or um, a lot of the more advanced acoustic guitar playing, actually nearly all of that you should know. If you can't get a handle on what they're doing, you're kind of thinking, where is he putting his fingers? I can't understand it. A lot of the time they're actually using one of these alternate tunings to make things easier to play. It was very daunting for me when I first took all this on when I was learning guitar. And in fact, I put it off for a number of years. But when I started to get into it, it just became so much easier to do quite complex things. Um, so for example, we've got the E major, just to recap, we've got the E major, A major. Now a chord that goes really well with those two chords is C sharp minor which, if you've ever covered it, is a really complex bar chord. This isn't going to sound good in the tuning, but to demonstrate, this is what it would look like. We can now play that chord with just one finger on what we call the root note, on the bass note, which is at fourth fret on the A string. So we'd have A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, and you only need that finger down. Make sure you're not pressing down any of the other strings. We actually want them all to ring out. Strum from that note, strum from string five. And that is a C sharp minor, and it sounds really great. And we can then jump from the E to this C sharp minor very easily by sliding your first finger along two frets. I hope you'll agree that sounds very professional and there was no dulling of the strings or muting or, or spaces in the plane because of jumping to a you know a nasty bar chord and um, there are other ways to do similar to this but as I say this is the most straightforward demonstration at least of how to focus more on your strumming hand by possibly looking into the scary world of, of alternate tunings but as I say it's such a payoff so the other chord we can use a lot in there is B the easiest way to play is just with that one finger in the tuning we're in on the B note, second fret, same note, same position it was in on the E, but strumming from string five. That's still actually an E chord, but we've got the B in the bass note, which makes it sound like a B chord. But the lowest note in your chord is this bass note or root note. And that makes it sound like that particular chord more than any other note. Now, if we put one other finger down, so say if we put our little finger on third fret of the third string like this, that actually is a B chord because we've changed one of the notes to make it not an E chord note, but the, the B chord note. And that does make it a full proper B chord. So if you, if you have any song now that has E, A, B, not a B7, but a proper B chord, which you would have to do as a nasty bar chord if you weren't doing this, and your C sharp minor. I kind of can't recommend anything else other than doing it this way if it's been a challenge for you or if you're not getting the sound that you're happy with that allows you to use extra strumming patterns. So what's a common order for these um, chords? I would say the best order to go for is the old four chord song order, though there are any order of these chords is always going to sound great. That's kind of the idea of being in a key. But let's start off with the E major chord. And we'll do that for a bar. 
just as an example. So a bar of E, four strums to begin with. Then stick your little or third finger down for the B chord, third fret of the third string. Again, this kind of tears up the rule book a little bit, but that's exactly, that's not me, that's alternate tunings, very much do that for you. So we have E, and then we have a B. We want to try not to play this thickest E string, which I'm muting it with the top of my, top of my first finger there. Slide that first finger to fourth fret for our C sharp minor, no need for any other finger down for that one. And then back to the A with our first finger, first fret of the third string. So first of all, I'm going to demo what that can sound like with a number of different strumming patterns and then we'll pick one and have a go at it. But you have complete freedom of what you do with this. As I say, once you've got the chords and the tuning right and, and the tools under your fingers, use them however you want. Just, just have fun. But this is my demo first of all. Now one thing to be aware of or wary of with these alternate tunings when you start playing about with just certain strings being out of tune and the rest in standard is that the other strings that haven't been changed out of their tuning can start to misbehave a little bit. They can start to move a little bit lower or a little bit higher than where you left them. So um, you might notice that last chord that I played it, it sounded good, but it was a little bit out of tune. It had just moved, just from me playing it and from the changes that we've made to the other strings. So you, as I say, the best way to do this is definitely to have any kind of guitar tuner that tells you, rather than just the standard tuning notes, it just tells you what note you're actually playing, what, what note is this, and uh, work from there. And then feel free to try out any um, alternate tunings that you, that you like but be aware that it is very much tearing up the rule book. So if I, I was now to play a melody, say I was going to play my minor pentatonic scale and I was going to go uh, up and to third, up and to second and using that scale shape from there, it will now, once I get to those two notes that have changed, it will now sound bad. Ooh, it all went wrong in the middle. <laughs> so, um, as I say, it, treat it as a world unto itself when you start changing the actual tuning of strings. Um, some great ones to check out are certainly drop D, open G tuning, and there's a classic tuning for um, acoustic guitar, especially for folk songs, which is called Dadgad. So that's D A D, Dad, G A D, Gad. Dad gad tuning. Um, that's used for a lot of beautiful folk songs and you can see how we can use those single single picks in the middle. But as I say, this video is just a demonstration of the possibilities when you kind of look outside the beginner's world and look to the pros and see how they actually do things to make them easier to play better things, to sound better, to make your E chord sound better than the next guy's E chord. Because with, without this, we all kind of have the same things to work on and it can be hard to come up with something that sounds interesting and, um, and to keep your attention. Anyway, thanks for checking out this lesson. Uh, please subscribe if you like what I do. I do have a whole bunch of two chord songs on my channel and website now, so definitely check those out if you want to work on your strumming a little bit more. They're great examples and then you can use them with this. Uh, give this video a like if you liked it. Um, give me a message in the comments. I do reply to as many as I can, though I'm getting a lot these days. And um, thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you again. Bye for now.